Hey, good morning, more to life. Good morning. It's good to see you all. Hey, Ryan Reister. How are you? I like that shirt. Hey, it's good to see you. Have you come to worship the Lord this morning? Would you stand to your feet? Hey, are we awake yet? Maybe not. Okay, so last week we introduced a song called Graves into Gardens. And the chorus is super simple. I would love for you to sing with us. It goes like this. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing, nothing that's better than you. Can you sing that with me? You think you can? What in the world is going on? You think you can? Just not. Yeah, if you yeah, can't yeah. say anything, just not. All right, let's sing it together. You ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, there's nothing. You sing it out. Better than you. Oh, there's. Lift up your voices this morning. There you go. Put a smile on your face. And tell them nothing is better than you. Sing it again. Sing it again. Lift up our voices. Oh, there's
tell him this morning? I searched the water and found there's nothing better than him. Oh, sing it out, sing it out. Lift up your voice, lift up your voice. Oh, tell him this morning, tell him this morning. There's nothing, oh, there's nothing that's better than you. seat for a few minutes. Hi everyone, my name is Jackie and I would like to welcome you here to More to Life. If this is your first time with us, we are thrilled that you are here. You should notice a green welcome card on your table. Do us a favor and fill one of those out so that we know how to pray for you. For the rest of my More to Life family, here's what's happening right now at More to Life. Hey, More to Life, coming up on Friday, June 19th, is our um, annual barbecue fundraiser for summer camp for our students. We're going back to Eagle Rock in July, and we're so excited. So if you bought tickets for our barbecue that was back in March, the one that we had to postpone to this Friday, if you have your tickets still, just come. We already have all of your info written down. If you bought a ticket, um, we have your info, so you can just show up or contact me if you have any questions. Um, we will be selling tickets after service today um, as well. If you, if you still want to get a ticket, there's still time. So again, the barbecue is this Friday, June 19th in Flagler Park number three, right across uh, from Dom's Appliances. Um, so again, thank you so much for all your support. Our students and our leaders and I and, and, and Sarah were so excited to go to Eagle Rock this year and see all that God's going to do. Thank you so much. Amanda and Aaron here, and we are super excited about Fuse 2020. That's right. If you have completed fourth through sixth grade, uh, this is for you. You don't want to miss this. So just like we did last summer, this summer, every Friday night in the month of July, we'll be gathering together. We'll be hanging out, having fun, doing a little bit of eating, doing some Bible study, and just getting to know one another. It's going to be a lot of fun, like she said. So if you want to sign up, here's how you do it. It's really simple. Go to FridayNightFuse.com, fill out the form, hit submit, and you're signed up. We'll reach out to you if there's any other details. 
details that you need to know, but that's all you have to do to sign up. FridayNightFuse.com. That's it. Simple, right? Simple enough. All right, let's get to it. Have some fun. We'll see you there. Hey, church family, in just a few moments, there will be an opportunity to worship the Lord by giving back to the Lord. Because of your obedience with your tithes and offerings and the Lord's faithfulness, More to Life is able to see lives transformed by Jesus Christ. There are four easy ways you can worship by giving. On your table, we have baskets where you can put your tithes and offerings in one of our giving envelopes. And, and in just a few moments, we'll be passing those baskets. So don't worry, if you miss one, there are, there are three offering boxes located throughout the room that you can place your giving envelopes in. You can also go to give to moretolife.com where you can give safely and securely from any mobile device or tablet. Personally, my favorite way to give is through the More to Life Church app, which can be downloaded for any iPhone or Android device. And don't worry, it's safe and secure. Thank you so much for worshiping with us through giving. That wraps up our announcements for this week. If you missed anything, you can always check out our Facebook page or by visiting our websites, m2lministries.com. Don't forget to connect with us on the M2L app right from your phone. It's a pretty awesome way to receive notifications and to sign up for any upcoming events. We love you all, and we hope you encounter the Lord's presence today here at More to Life. Woo, amen. Good morning. Very, very good to be back. Uh, we missed y'all last week. Fran and I got to go up and see Valerie. Uh, so we spent a week in Missouri, and we, we went to a different church, wonderful church, but I missed our church. I missed being here desperately. So uh, really, really good to be back today. I, I, a couple of things just I want to remind you of, that Friday night fuse that you saw, that, that's a transition time. It's something that happens through the summer, and the, the target audience is those fourth through sixth graders that we're trying to get to move from the children's church age, get them ready to move into the youth age. So they have a couple of targeted events throughout the summer uh, just to kind of introduce them to that, uh, to, to let them get to know uh, Aaron and Sarah as they're, they're moving up, up you know, from the, the younger kids. But it's also, it, it's a great time of growth for them. It really is. So in, in, encourage your kids, if they're, if they're in that age group, sign them up. Get them, let them be a part of that. Uh, also, uh, that the barbecue that was supposed to happen way back before uh, COVID happened, uh, it, it's about to happen this Friday, so make sure and you can still buy tickets. You can still uh, sign up. I think Aaron will have some afterwards, and that, that goes directly to support the youth as they're going to camp uh, this summer. All right? The, uh, the big thing I want to just tell you guys, and, and we're, we're starting to fill up again, just so you know, next week uh, we're going we're gonna to add some more tables. We're going to bring a few more tables back. We're going we're gonna to bring back the cafe, and so we're going to begin to open up a little more fully. We're not quite ready to go full bore with Children's Church yet, but we will be starting at the end of the month, at least with our nursery. We do have right now the, the mommy room that's open, so if you've got a little one, that you need to step outside of that with or anything, you can go up in the mommy room and there's a, a monitor up in there and it, it's up on the stage, so you're welcome to do that. But at the end of the month, we'll be starting back with nursery and then slowly adding as we're able to, as we're able to add staff back, um, slowly adding the, the full bore of all of our children. Amen? Is that good? Are you ready to start back? I am, I am desperately ready. Uh, it is a great day. We, we do have our graduates uh, that we're going to celebrate with today. But, uh, but they're going to come and they're going to be a part of the service after these next few songs. But I, I just want to tell you this. As in, I'm going to ask you to stand with me for a second. I want you to listen very carefully. One of the things that uh, w through this entire scare, through this entire um, sickness time, pandemic, no matter what you think about it, no matter what you, know, you feel, and there's all different feelings, but I get that. But one of the things that the enemy of our soul did during that time was he tried to steal your tongue. He, he tried to steal your voice. He tried to steal your praise. And he's tried to silence you. And it's time to not be silent anymore. We've come together to worship. Let's worship him. Let's worship the king. He's worthy, amen? He's worthy. So don't let the enemy steal your voice. Don't let him steal your praise. Join with me in worship of the King. Amen? 
Father, we love you, and we're so excited to be back. We thank you, Father, for that time. Lord, ju just, just in transition, even for this time, we th it, it's been a while, Lord, but even through it, you've taught us things. And so we thank you for it. We thank you for the, 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 the rough parts of it because you've taught us things. And, Lord, I pray that, that through that time we learn to spend time at your feet. We learn to tune into you, but today, Father, as we're together corporately, Lord, we don't want the enemy to steal our voice anymore. We want to come to you with open arms. We want to come to you with hearts wide open to praise, to, uh, just in adoration, to lift up your name. And Lord, we do so to glorify you and you alone. So, Lord, as we bring you this offering of praise, may it, may it be pleasing, Lord, to you because of the condition of our hearts. So we humbly bow and we humbly ask that you fill this place with your spirit. And, Lord, as we celebrate our, our graduates today and, and as Aaron brings a challenge and, and a message, uh, Lord, to, to each of us, I pray, Lord, that you would speak through him, that, your, Lord, your anointing would be on him heavy. Lord, for each of those young people that are, are graduating and, and moving forward, whether, whether they're going in the military or going off to school or, or joining the workforce, and Lord, each of them, I pray that they would join you, that they would align themselves with you, that they would run to you, Father, and Lord, they would seek you out for what the next step of their life would be. We worship you, Lord, and we praise your holy name. In your mighty name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Before we start this next song, I just wanted to uh, just kind of address the, the craziness and madness that's going on in our world. And um, a lot of times I think we kind of live in that world um, every other day but Sunday. And then, you know, we kind of just kind of forget what's going on. Uh, and uh, forgetting that that's the, that's the world that we have to work in. That's the wor uh, world we have to live in and raise our kids in. And, um, it's a big, when, when cr just when crazy things happen like this, uh, it seems to be a big why God moment. And um, uh, mostly for those who are lost, but, but sometimes for those who, who know the Lord. Um, you know why does he, why does he let these terrible things happen? Or, you know, where where were you when this happened? I just wanted to read um, a bit of scripture uh, to encourage you. This is in uh, this is Revelation six, and it says, "When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held, and they cried with a loud voice, saying." How long, O oh Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. I want to read another one for you. It says, Who are these arrayed in white robes? And where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There's so much more going on than what is happening right now. And don't think for a second that God doesn't see it or that God's not aware of it or God hasn't ordained it or God doesn't have his hand in it in some miraculous way that we don't understand. So this next song is called Jesus Paid It All. And that last part that I read, this is, this is what Jesus paid for. This is what he got. He gave us a way to, to one day dwell with God. 
he paid for the fact that we can stand before him and fellowship face to face with him, having no remembrance, no tears, no pain. So if you believe that, would you worship with me this morning? Would you lift up your voice of praise, thanking him for the sacrifice God the Father made, giving his only son? Savior say thy strength indeed is small shall of weakness watch and pray find in me thine all in all Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain, he walked it white as
lift up your voice. Precious and no precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no one found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes, God, we praise you. We thank you that we, we belong to you, that you hold us in your hands. You not only cleansed of us of sin, but, Lord, you took us by your side and you draw us close to you, Lord, and you love us so. Church, this next song is, is a blessing over the people of God. And 4,000 years ago, God told the prophets, I want you to say this blessing over the people. I want you to give the people this blessing because this is my word to my people, my children that belong to me. And he said in that blessing, he said, to your children and your children and to their children. And each generation, that blessing is taken and whether the, the music style changes or whether our language changes or whatever it is, God gives it to his people again and he said, this is for you. You're the children I was telling, oh, I was talking about. You're the children. This blessing is for you. And this morning we're blessing not only this church but the graduates that are going off. And we want to give them this blessing. We want to sing this blessing over them. Because to be blessed doesn't mean that you get things. When we say we're blessed, we, we think, oh, God gave me this. Oh, you're blessed with this. You're blessed with this person with that. That's not what blessed is. Blessed means that you're holy and you're consecrated. And we are held in his hand because we are, that is why we're blessed. We may have nothing monetarily in this world. We may have lost everything to the world, it seems like, but we are still blessed because we are held in his hand. And we sing this blessing over you and over the graduates as they go out, that they would remember that they are held in the hand of God. And no matter what happens, that they are his children. And we want to sing this blessing over you.
shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Let's receive that blessing this morning. Let's sing.
the blessing this morning. Let's sing it together, church. Sing it together. Lift it up. Go before you and behind you and beside you. you love him this morning. Can you lift up your voices and tell him that you love him and welcome him here. Ask him to speak to you this morning. Can you ask him to speak to you this morning right where you're at? Lord, speak to me. Lord, speak to me. Oh, Lord, give us ears to hear what you have to say because you're here. Oh, we love you. We love you. Tell him you love him, church. Tell him you love him, church. Tell him you love him. sweet name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. And amen. You may be seated. Have you been praying and you still have no answers? Have you been pouring out? 
held your heart for so many years Have you been hoping That things would have changed by now Have you cried all the faith you have through so many tears Don't forget the things that he has done before And remember he It's like the brightest sunrise Waiting on the other side On the darkest night Don't ever lose hope Hold on and believe Maybe you just haven't seen it Just haven't seen it yet You're closer than you think you are Only moments from the break of dawn All his promises are just up ahead Maybe you just haven't seen it Just haven't seen it yet Congratulations. Are you excited that you did it? You sure? You don't look excited. I think this is the most grads that we've ever had sitting up here at one time. And, I, we're, and we're still missing, I think, three. Um, so that's incredible. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Um, we're gonna, each of you are going to share a testament. I'm kidding. We're not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to put you on the spot. <laughs> I promise. I have a short challenge I want to I share with you uh, before you guys begin this next season, um, which is an exciting season. I know, I know one season's ending, I know that can be hard sometimes, especially in 2020. I understand. I want to read you something from Matthew 26. This is, the, this is the part when Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. It's one of my favorite um, parts of the gospel is what's happening here. It says, then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and, began, and he began to be grieved and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. And he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed. Now he didn't trip, okay, just so you know that. He, uh, so he began to pray. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, So you men could not keep watch with me for one hour. Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He began, he went away again a second time and prayed, saying, My father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. And he, le and he left them again and went away and prayed a third time, saying the same thing once more. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us go. Let us be going. Behold, the one who betrays me is at hand. Now you're probably wondering, what in the world could this scene have anything to do with a graduation charge? I want to focus on verse 41 and 42. Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Think about that. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
And then later on in the next verse, Jesus says, your will be done. One of my favorite verses in Scripture is Matthew 6.10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, you guys are heading off. Some of you are going into the military. Some of you are going to college. How many of you are going to college? How many of you are going off into the military? How many of you are not 100% sure yet? And it's okay. I changed my major 12 times. Okay, 12 times. So trust me. It's okay. Verse 41 again, keep watching and praying. So you're about to head off. One thing I couldn't, I couldn't stress enough to anyone, any graduate that's leaving. A lot of times, students that grow up in homes where, where Jesus is the foundation and they go off to school, the workforce, college, they move out. Don't forget your first love, Jesus. Don't, don't forget your discipline of reading God's word. Don't forget to read God's word. Don't forget when you go off into this next season of adulthood to keep watching and praying. Because here's the thing, Jesus could return at any moment. Are you ready? Be alert. Because you guys are going to encounter people wherever it is you end up. I know some of you are going out of state, like I said, the military, and even here in town, you're going to encounter people that don't know the Lord. And we live in a culture that is trying to be the influence. But as believers, as followers of Jesus, let us influence culture. To, so go and be a beacon of hope, of light, of unity. Live out the gospel. Don't just talk about it. Because I think a lot of people just talk about the gospel. Yeah, Jesus, that, that, the gospel is good news. But let wherever you go, let them see it in you. Let them see it in you. Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. There's going to be moments where you want to give up. There are going to be moments where you feel discouraged. There are going to be moments where you want to throw in the towel. Keep watching, keep praying, press in to his presence. I can't stress that enough. I wish I was told this when I graduated. Matter of fact, I wish I knew Jesus when I graduated. But I know God has great plans for you. And I know, you, I know some of you might be nervous, some of you might be anxious or unsure. And I know this year has been a year unlike any other. I can't say what it's like to be in your shoes, because when I graduated in 2008, there was no pandemic. There was no COVID-19. And I know it ruined a lot of things for you, especially your senior year. That's the year you look forward to, right? That's the year where you guys are on the, on the top. You are the seniors. And I know that pandemic hijacked that. But here's the thing. There's a new beginning. And you can run it well. You can run it well. And just know that we all, we all love you and we're proud of you. And also very excited for you. So here's what we're going to do. We want, just like the song, that was the perfect song to end with right before this, the, the blessing. Um, I'm sure Luke, wherever Luke is, um, that was a good job. That was awesome. Right. Um, so what we want to do, we want to pray over you. Um, as we go into time of prayer, I want to I ask if the families of the grads would come and stand by your grad. And we want to pray for you. We want to bless you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to begin us, and I want to ask if you would lift up your voices and pray for your grad. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father. I thank you for each one of these graduates, Lord. Thank you for each one of these families. As we begin to lift them up, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit 
fill this place. To bless them, to encourage them, to protect them. Lord, I pray that your spirit will rise up within them and that, Lord, that wherever they go, they will be the influence. That the gospel will be lived out in their lives and that other people will see it and they will be a blessing to other people and it will be a domino effect, Lord. We can change culture one person at a time. Join them in prayer. If you'd like to come to the altar, just come to the altar and come around. And just continue and let's just continue in the spirit of prayer right now as a church. Prayer for these young people. Prayer for their families. Prayer for the next generation. Prayer for our nation. like to, to intercede for someone you'd like for somebody to come and join you in that if you if that's you today if you just lift your hand we'll come to you we'd love to come alongside you and pray with you gentlemen right here thank you somewhere else anywhere else Thank you for every graduate here and every family member here or that's represented. Lord, I thank you for the challenge that Aaron's brought, and I know 
that he's about to bring a word, and I'm just praying, Lord, that you Lord, would fill him as he does. Lord, I know that you've called each one of us to be able-bodied ministers, each one of us to be ministers of reconciliation. Lord, at this time that we're living in, as, as the church of Jesus Christ, as your church, Lord, Lord, I know that it's time, it's long been time for us to step up, for us to pray like never before, for us to share like never before, for us to witness like never before. Lord, the time is near. I believe it's very near that you'll come soon. as we pray for things to get better I know that they may get worse before you come so Lord I'm just asking Father for strength for your body Lord. strength for believers strength for Lord your family the body of Christ that we would live you like never before thank you Lord Jesus thank you for your Holy Spirit that gives us the ability to do that Lord we can not stand, we could not speak, we could not witness, or we, we could not act and move and be the body of Christ without the power of your Holy Spirit working in us. So I thank you, Father, for that. I pray your blessing on each child here, each young person here, Lord, and I pray that you would fill them. Lord, as they mobilize and move out, Lord, to wherever you're taking them to next, Lord, that you fill them. Raise up a mighty army, Lord. Young warriors that will pursue you and worship you. Live the truth. We thank you, Father, and we love you. And we wait upon you now as Aaron brings a word, Lord. I just pray Lord, that your hand will be upon him. I pray for Pastor James this morning as he shared in more haven. Lord, just fill him up today. Our sister churches throughout the community, Lord, where they're pastors today, Lord, let them know that they stand. Bind them, Lord, to you, to your cross, to your purposes, to you, Lord, what you desire. In your mighty name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. Y'all can make your way back. As they're doing that, as they make their way back, if you would take those baskets and pass them out all the way to, to the outside walls, uh, there's some men that will pick those up for you. Thank you. Well, good morning again. Um, grad service is always um, one of my favorite. It's always exciting to see the grads because they always look so nervous. So. I get it because I was a kid growing up where when the teacher said we had a project or a presentation, I would text my mom, uh, or actually I'd, this is when we had Next House. Um, to come check me out of school because <laughs> I hated it. Um, so the fact that I'm here is testament to what God can do, basically, that's all. So I have a message uh, for us um, that I believe God put on my heart. And so over the next three hours, we're going to unpack it, Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll be, I'm just going to be transparent with you. One of the things that I always wrestle with is I, and you can ask, I always share this with Pastor Paul. I always stress over the length of a message. I don't know. Maybe you can relate. <laughs> or maybe it's just me. Um, I always stress over that. So, but I know it's in the Lord's hands. If you have your Bibles, uh, we're going to be in Exodus chapter 13. Um, it's right after Genesis in the Old Testament. Exodus chapter 13. And I'm going to be uh, preaching from the New American Standard, so follow along with whatever translation you have. I'm 
before we begin, let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Father, um, that we can open it up. Lord, I pray that your spirit will, will speak here, Lord, that everything that I say, Lord, will be exactly what you want. And Lord, I, want, I pray that we hear from you directly, Lord. Not Aaron. Lord, I pray that we hear from you, Jesus. So we need, we need you, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen. So I have a question, or a statement, really. What if this pandemic was a type of wilderness for the church? Think about that for a moment. Back in January, um, you know, it was in the news. We heard about it. We heard about what was happening in China. My wife and I, we went on a cruise. There was no worries about it, even on the boat. When we came back a week later, it like blew up, it seemed like. And everything seemed to change. But what if this pandemic was a type of wilderness for the church? And when I say the church, I mean believers. I'm not talking about buildings. I'm talking about Christ followers, disciples of Jesus, Christians. What if this pandemic was a type of wilderness for the church? A season to grow us and get us to repent of our sin, a wilderness where all we can do is cry out to the Lord for a move of God in our nation. A time and a season where the only thing that we can do is to cry out to Him. I mean, let's think about it. When other time in our lifetime has there been no competition for the church on Sunday mornings? Entertainment was shut down. Sports was shut down. Restaurants were closed. Bars were closed. But when you turned on TBN, you, turned, you got on Facebook, what did, you, what did most people see? A live service from a church somewhere. A lot of churches, last minute, had to put together a live stream um, production or whatever. That didn't do it before, but now are doing it. Now churches are reaching people all over. But the cool thing about what happened in this pandemic is it brought us home, right? And I, I know for my family, it was a blessing in, in some ways to be with my kids and my wife. But what if this pandemic was a type of wilderness that God wanted to use to wake us up? We're going to be talking about Egypt and the wilderness this morning. And a question I might ask repeatedly is, what's your Egypt? It'll make more sense in a few moments. So um, we're going to begin in verse 17 of chapter 13 of Exodus. It says, now when Pharaoh, Pharaoh had let the people go, God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, okay? Even though it was near, that way was shorter, but God didn't take them that way. For God said the people might change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. Verse 18, hence God led the people around by the way of the wilderness to the Red Sea. And the sons of Israel went up in a martial array or orderly form from the land of Egypt. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had made the sons of Israel solemnly swear, saying, God will surely take care of you. Do you believe that? And you shall carry my bones from here with you. Then they set out from Succoth and camped in Etham on the edge of the wilderness. Verse 21, the Lord was going before them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them on the way in a pillar of fire by night to give them light that they might travel by day and night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. And the first point is this. It's really simple. The wilderness is often the place God takes us to grow us. The wilderness is often the place God takes us to grow us. Have you ever been in a season where God was growing you and you might have been miserable? Or it just wasn't easy? Or better yet, it wasn't what you wanted. 
it wasn't how you pictured it. But one thing I've learned, that even in the wilderness, we can still praise him. We can still worship him. Because just because you're in a wilderness doesn't mean God is not good. He is always good. He is always good. So even if this pandemic was a type of wilderness for the church, God is still good. And he is still on the throne. And we must not forget that. So the wilderness is often the, the place God takes us to grow us. Because a lot of times, if, if you think about it, if, you were to take, if they would have taken the shorter route, do you think the people of Israel would have learned all that God wanted them to, to learn or to become the people that God wanted them to be without going the detour, so to speak? Sometimes God will take you through the wilderness because that's the only way that he's going to get you to become the person he wants you to be. It's only, sometimes it's the only place where you're going to learn the lessons that you need to learn to be who God wants you to be. And maybe it's a wilderness that's going to take the, to wake up the church to be the church that God wants her to be. I don't know about you, but it, did the Holy Spirit speak to you at all during this pandemic about what any, any areas of your life where something needs to change? Wake up. He did that for me. I know he did it for me. One, it just made me realize even more so that there's a whole world that is full of fear. That there's a world full of hatred. And the church must be on the front lines showing the love of Christ. So God might not always take you the shortest route. How many of you would be ex are excited about that thought? It's like, say you want to go to Fort Pierce. You just take 70, right? What, it's like, what, 30 minutes? Now that it's four lane. But instead, God takes you up 441 to Yeehaw. Go over the Vero, and then you get on 98, and then you cut down. But then there's an accident, so you have to get off the highway and go to another way. So three hours later, you arrive at Chick-fil-A. Sometimes he takes us on detours. But we have to trust that he knows best. Okay, he knows best. So God might not always take the shortest route, but know this, there's always purpose in the detour. Okay, there's always purpose in the route that he takes you. And the route that he's directing the church here and globally, there's always a purpose. God's in control. You know, sometimes detours are not fun. You know, sometimes God will take you on a different path and it's exciting. Other times it's like, because it, it goes against what you want. And it's like, oh, this is not good. This is not what I wanted. A couple years ago, I took my wife to the airport um, in Orlando, okay? And this is, you know how you get to Orlando, right? You take 70, or not 75, the turnpike. And um, so I dropped, I dropped her and Lexi off at the airport. They were flying to Ohio. And I don't remember, it was probably 6, 7 o'clock or something like that. And I get in my car, I'm like, I'm hungry. And so I, I, I'm like, I'm going to stop at um, one of the service plazas on the turnpike. I can't remember which one it was. Maybe it was Canoe Creek or whatever it's called. Um, and I, I, so first I pull up to the gas station to get gas. I'm on my way home. This is the normal route, the quickest way. I pull up to the gas station, I get gas, and then... While I'm pumping my gas, I hear, Sss. it's never good to hear a weird noise while you're pumping gas, first of all. So I, I look around at my car, and I realize my front tire is leaking air. I ran over a nail. So I get the gas, I go park. And if you don't, if anything about me is, I am not a handyman. Okay? Just ask Mark. He, he helps me fix everything in my house. I, even when it comes to changing the tire, I, I, I know how to do it, but the, in the back of our car, it was this kind of jack that you had to put together. I wish I knew Mark then. And so I, I, I sat there, I called Sarah, and I was mad. I was like, I just want to go home because my boys were at the Lay's house. I was like, I just want to go home. Now I can't. My tire's flat. 
on, on the turnpike. I'm like an hour and a half away from home. So this is around 7 o'clock, I think. So I call my insurance company. And they're like, yeah, we can send a truck. It'll be there an hour. And then a little bit later, they call me. Oh, by the way, it's going to be three hours. Three hours at the service. I don't know how long you've ever spent at the service plazas. But three hours I waited there. I ate my Wendy's. Then I went and got more food. And I waited and I waited. But here's the, here, the whole point of this story is God put me on a detour to teach me a lesson of patience. As awesome as that is, he used a nail in my tire to teach me a lesson of patience. So if you ever want to ask God for patience, you never know what he's going to do to give it to you, okay? So, but I learned there was a lesson in that detour for me. To trust him that he knows what's going to happen and that he's in control. And so the Israelites, you know, they're leaving Egypt. And they didn't go the shortest route. But God had purpose in the wilderness for them. He had purpose in the wilderness for them. Sometimes God takes us on routes to grow us. Even if the route was the result of something beyond our control, God can use it. God can turn anything into something good. Wouldn't you agree? God can use any situation and he can redeem it. I believe God is the God of redemption. He can rewrite he can redeem your mistakes. He can, he, can, he can use anything in your life that you might have messed up and blown. And he can redeem. And he can redeem. Uh, see, here's a, one, one thing that bugs me as a believer is so many Christians believe in Jesus for their salvation. But they leave it at that. Okay, he can save me but, from hell, but he can't fix my situation. He can't, he can't fix this bondage that I'm in, this Egypt that I'm in. No, God, God, is, God is, yes, the God of our salvation, but he, he can deliver you from your Egypt. The question is, do you believe that? No amount of preaching will change it. You have to make the decision. Can, do you believe that God can deliver you? Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that all things work together for the good to, of those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. You know, the route that our nation is on, I believe, is not the route that God wants for us. You turn on the news. It's, it's, it's horrible. Between the pandemic of fear that has swept across our nation, it's almost like earlier in the year, fear was the, was the, uh, the bondage. Fear was the... The Egypt, it was sweeping across our nation. Everyone, a lot of people, I won't say everyone, but a lot of people were fearful. And now like a, almost like a switch. It seems like hatred is sweeping across the world, especially in our nation. And I don't believe God wants us to be on a route of fear and hatred. I don't. But God can redeem, rewrite, and use what the enemy and the world wants for evil and use it for good. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, you know, we, we've all um, heard in the news about George Floyd. How, how tragic that was. The injustice of it. But here's an example of what God can do. How God can redeem. There's an article, um, I actually heard about this article from, uh, Pastor Paul shared it with me. There's an article that was released, and, and, you, and this type of stuff you won't ever see in the mainstream news. Because they don't want it in the news. But what happened was wrong. Was injustice, yes. But look what God is doing in the very place where George Floyd was killed. Listen to this, this is the title of the article. Born again by the power of Jesus, dozens of people saved, healed at intersection where George Floyd was killed. The world has witnessed violent protests and peaceful demonstrations for nearly two weeks following the death of George Floyd. But we've also seen testimonies of faith and love among Christian brothers and sisters revealing that there is no racial division in Christ. Would you agree with that? 
Now the streets of Minneapolis where Floyd was killed have become the site of an outpouring of God's love and salvation as hundreds of people have gathered to glorify God through worship, evangelism, and baptism. People are getting saved, baptized, and healed on the place where evil took place. How cool is God? But the secular world won't, you know, they won't promote that. But no, God can redeem. So what's the, what's the route that you're on? Are you in a wilderness season yourself? Maybe your wilderness season is you haven't heard God's voice in a while. And, th- and those are usually the moments where we need to be in God's word the most. When you feel dry. So my second point this morning is this. God knew though Israel was out of Egypt, it was going to take years to get Egypt out of Israel. I'll say it again. God knew though Israel was out of Egypt, it was going to take years to get Egypt out of Israel. Okay? Here's the thing. Though we come to Jesus, we, we, you know, we get saved, oftentimes it takes time to get us out of our own Egypt. Okay? The place where we are in bondage, and that might look different for each of us. You know, after I got saved, I got saved in a tiny little church on the outskirts of town. I'm pretty sure that Pastor Danny's dad built back in the day. Is that correct? It's it's just cool how God is full circle, but I remember being in that, in that, that church that night, and I got saved, and, my, and, and I was the kid that had um, listened to all kinds of music on my computer. I had a program, a program called LimeWire. Anyone know what that is? So we all have done it. <laughs> Students don't do this, okay? Um, uh, it was a program where you download music. It's not on iTunes, okay? It was stealing. I had thousands of songs. And that was, so I, I was saved. And that was one of the first things God delivered me from. My problem of downloading stuff on LimeWire. But it was years for other things in other areas of my life that I was in bondage that God delivered me from. You know, he, he set me free. He, he saved me. But a lot of times I found myself in my own Egypt. In bondage. And maybe you're here this morning and you're in an Egypt. Depression, anger. You, you feel like your marriage is hopeless. You're, uh, it's, maybe it's an addiction. What if today, what if this morning is the day of the beginning of your exodus? Well, God's going to deliver you. You know, when I first, when I first, one of the things that was years after my salvation that God um, opened my eyes to that this was an Egypt for me was um, right after I stepped into ministry. Um, when I first went into youth ministry, I was a youth pastor at another church. And I remember right when I started youth ministry, I began having these issues um, with, my, with my throat. Like all of a sudden, I couldn't breathe. I remember, because this is the time I worked at Home Depot, I remember I was walking down the front of the store, and then out of nowhere, I just felt like, I just felt this sudden rush of panic and fear. My heart was racing. I felt like my throat was literally closing. And I sat down in the front, and the, my manager gave me water, and she's like, do you want me to call an ambulance? I was like, no, not no. Uh, but I fought this battle uh, for I don't know how long. I would wake up in the middle of the night out, out of a dead sleep, completely in a, in a full-blown panic attack. I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but anxiety is horrible. The panic attacks were horrible, and I began to experience these regularly. And that, and that was in Egypt for me. It was anxiety. And I needed the Lord to get me out of my Egypt to deliver me because I was in bondage to, my, to anxiety. 
And so I, w- I went to the doctor. Um, I, I did everything. I was, I was, it was so strong on me. And this is what, this, this is what happened. I remember, because um, the medicine I was taking w- kind of messed with my mood. And I remember my wife looking at me. She's like, hand me those. And, and, she, and we wrote these um, on, on the index cards, different prayers. We put them all over our house. And no matter where I went in my house, I was reminded of God's truth and God's promises and who God was and who I was in Christ. And eventually God delivered me. Now, I'm not suggesting that you go and stop taking any medication that the doctor gave. Don't, don't hear that, okay? Please, don't hear that. But I, in, my, in my journey, the bold prayers of my wife helped me realize the bondage that I was in and my anxiety. And I experienced an exodus. What is your Egypt this morning? What is it that you're in bondage in? Maybe it's that thing that no one else knows about. It's your secret sin. In reality, it's not a secret because God knows. Other people might not, but God knows. What I've learned is the way of the wilderness is more about your character than your comfort. The way of the wilderness is more about your character than your comfort. Sometimes he wants to, the wilderness is the only way that he's going to get you to become the person he wants you to be. And sometimes it takes a detour. But I promise you there's purpose in the wilderness. There's purpose. I mean, just think about this pandemic. How many people the church reached that we might not have reached before. Now that, you know, now that everything's subsiding, I want to encourage people to, you know, to come. Don't, for, don't forsake the gathering of the gather, the assembly. Don't, for, don't forget to gather together. But it was, it was amazing to see what God was doing during this pandemic, how, how he was reaching people. It was almost like 2020 started, and then, you know, everyone had their plans. This is what we're going to do in 2020, but then here's God's plan. It goes like this, and nope, there's the detour. But there's purpose in it. I believe that. 100%. I believe that God has a purpose in everything that's happened. So instead of letting fear or hatred dictate what we're going to do, I think think we need to open up our hearts and say, okay, Lord, what's in my heart? What do I need to repent of? And let's reflect Jesus to our culture and influence our culture. You know, the, the church needs to be the voice, the, in my opinion, the loudest voice about who Jesus is, what Jesus can do. Because no amount of legislation, or however you say that word, let's just say law, how about that? No matter law, no politician is going to fix the human heart. But God can. But God can. Flip over to Exodus chapter 14. Uh, Beginning in verse 10, it says, As Pharaoh drew near, the sons of Israel looked, and behold, now this is the, uh, the, the Israelites had left, okay? They had left Egypt, the Exodus had started, it says, as Pharaoh drew near, he was, Pharaoh was in pursuit of the Israelites. And behold, the, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they became very frightened, the Israelites, when they saw that the um, Egyptians were coming after them. So the sons of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, is it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt with us in this way, bringing us out of Egypt. Is this not the word that we spoke to you in Egypt saying, leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? 
For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. They're saying, you know, God was delivering them. He did deliver them. He's on his way. And they're saying it would have been better for us to die and, to, and serve the Egyptians. That's not, the, that's, not what, that's not the attitude that God wants us to have. Trust me, listen. The Israelites wanted to return to Egypt where they were in bondage. Think about that for a moment. How often do you want to return to what you know, to what you're comfortable with, but that's your area of bondage? Here's, here's the thing. They lacked trust in the God who just delivered them. You know, faith must become trust. Your faith in Christ must become trust in Christ. That you believe, that you trust that God is in control. That yes, you might be on a, on a detour. That the plans that you have or had might not be happening the way that you want them to happen. But God is taking you around on a, on a, in, into a wilderness. Just know, just trust his leading. God knew it was going to take years to get Egypt out of the Israelites even though they were out of Egypt physically. That's where we have to trust him. God knew the way of the wilderness is what they needed to learn to trust him and not any security that they ha might have had back in Egypt, even though they were in bondage. Think about that. They were in bondage and they wanted to go back to the place of the army that was coming after them. Think about how irrational that is in some ways. How, how fear might have overtaken them. Even though they stood there faithless, God showed his faithfulness by parting the Red Sea and taking out the Egyptian army. But isn't it encouraging to know that even when you and I are faithless, God remains faithful? How many times have you found yourself in a situation where you just doubted? You were faithless. And, and God and his faithfulness still came through. You know, a while back, um, um, our family went to Alabama. Every few years we go to Alabama for Thanksgiving. And this, year, this, this one year we came back. And this is like a couple of days after we got back. We went to the tree lighting ceremony. And we got back to our house. We were walking down our hallway. And um, it, your hallway shouldn't squish. Right? Our, um, our, we had a, behind my, sh in our shower, our shower busted and flooded our shower. Well, I mean, it flooded under the shower um, and into the wall and down our entire hallway and into our boys' room some and into our living room some. Like under the floor, it was all wet. So we had, a, we had to rip it all out. Mark came over, and a number of other people came over. And I remember thinking to myself, I, I, this was a moment of faithlessness for me. I was like, what are we going to do? How are we going to replace this? Our insurance doesn't cover water damage. But here, I'm, here, here, I'm just here to tell you this. Even when I had those moments of faithfulness, God was faithful. God was faithful. He was our Jehovah Jireh. He provided And now today our floors are dry. So, I mean, that was a few years ago, so they should be dry by now. But, but he provided. That's my long story short. He provided. The Israelites, they, they were standing there in, 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 a, in a moment of faithlessness. But God and his character and his faith, in his faithfulness, I should say, and their faithlessness, God was faithful. And he still parted the Red Sea and gave them a way out. Think about that. Even after they made that statement about wanting to go back, he still parted the Red Sea. Third point is this. The way of the wilderness gives God the most glory. The way of the wilderness gives God the most glory. The nail in my tire gave God more glory than teaching me patience in another way. 
the, the wilderness that, that you might be in right now. Or maybe the wilderness, if you want to call it a wilderness, that the church was experiencing with COVID-19 gives God the most glory. Especially during a pandemic, because the, the only solution is we can, all we can do is cry out to him. All we can do is turn to him. But the way of the wilderness gives God the most glory. Only God could have parted the Red Sea. Only God could have defeated the Egyptian army. Only God could have made the walls of Jericho fall down once they get there years later. Only God could have provided for the Israelites in the wilderness. So the, the wilderness path, by the way of the wilderness that the, the Israelites were going, would give God the most glory. So when, when we tell of what happened to the Israelites in the wilderness, all, it always points back to how he provided, how, how God delivered. It never points back to, look, look what Moses did, how, it, that Moses or the Israelites. No, no, God. It gives God the most glory. Here's a, the here's a reality check. God's not going to share his glory. So the wilderness that you're in, God has for a purpose. And listen, this is an opportunity for you to glorify him in ways that you might not have been able to outside of the wilderness. So it gives him the most glory. Only God could have set me free from my anxiety. The Egypt that I was trapped in, that I was held in bondage in, only God could have done that. So today, if someone's here and they find an exodus, only God could have done that. Only God could have done that. So what is it for you? What has happened in your life up until this moment where all you could say is only God could have done that? What has happened in your life where you, that, all, that you can say, you know, it was only because of God that this happened or that I was set free or that someone I know was saved or delivered. It was only God. It was all God. Maybe he came through financially, physically, emotionally, in your marriage. What is it for you? Up until this point, what has God done that it can only be him? The last point is shorter. God will lead the way. God will lead the way. In Exodus 13, verse 21, it said, you know, the Lord was going before them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them by the way and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light that they might travel by day and night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. God will lead the way. We must remember God is able, okay? Can you say that with me? God is able. Do you believe that? God is able. We must remember God is able to deliver us so that we can have an exodus from our own Egypt. You might be someone who said, yeah, God can do that for that person. Or God did that for the Israelites back in the Old Testament days. God, it's, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and what? Forever. He's the same God he was then that delivered them out of Egypt, and he's the same God today. And he can deliver you out of your Egypt. He's a God of deliverance. How long do you want to be in bondage? Are you like the, Egypt, uh, the Israelites saying, no, it's better for me to go back to my Egypt? Because that's what we know. But here's the thing. God has so much more plans for you, so much better things for you than, than your Egypt. Do we trust him? Do, do we believe that God is able to deliver us from our Egypt? You know, Proverbs 6, 9 says, um, the mind of man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. What's going to happen is what God wants to happen. Here's the thing. God knew COVID-19 would happen. You know, 2019 didn't end, and all, of a sudden, and, God, and all of a sudden God's like, oh, I didn't see that coming. No, no, God knew. Even before creation, God knew what would happen in 2020. He knows what's going to happen in 2021. 
And if, and if we believe that God knows, then we should be able to say, God is able. God is able. God is able to set you free. God still heals. God still sets free. God still delivers. You can have an exodus. We need to trust that God will lead us on the right path, even if you find yourself in the wilderness, even if you are on a detour. We must trust and know that He is in control. One of the things I want to do as, we, as I bring it to a close is I want you, if you have a pen in your journal or wherever you want to write, I want, I want to ask you to write something down. I want you to write down what the Lord might be saying is your Egypt. The Holy Spirit, show me what is my Egypt? What is the thing that I'm in bondage in? And if you don't know right now, keep asking him. And then when you wake up at 3 a.m., write it down. Because sometimes he might wake you up and tell you. Write it down. And if, and if, you, if you don't write anything right now, I want to encourage you to do it later on now. After you do write it down, here's what I want you to do. I want you to cross it out. And I'm like, what's the point of that? Here's the thing. Put a big X over it, and next to it, write these three words. God is able. And let that be a reminder to you. God is able to deliver me from this bondage. I'm going to pray every day for my exodus. I'm going to pray that God will deliver me. How many years were the Israelites in Egypt before God delivered them? Sometimes God might, might deliver instantly. Sometimes it might be over time. Or maybe there's still some lessons he wants you to learn. But all I know is, remind yourself daily of those three words that God is able. Especially you grads going off. Remember, God is able. He is able question is, do you believe that? So here's what we're going to do as we come to a close. I'm going to ask if you would to close your eyes. I want to ask you if you're here this morning and you can say, you know what, I, I, the Lord has laid on my heart what my Egypt is. I want, I, I want someone to come pray with me now to, to pray for my exodus. If you're here and that's you, would you just lift your hand up? And we'll have someone come, come pray with you right now. We have a few people over here. And anyone else? Do you, do, has God showed you what your Egypt is? Has he showed you what, what it might be in your life? I guarantee there's something that we all need God to deliver us from. Is there anyone else? And while they're praying, we don't ever want to give an opportunity not to present the opportunity for salvation. Here's the thing. The gospel can be summed up in one verse, really. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. God loves you. Jesus died on the cross for your sin and my sin so that we could be restored in right relationship with him. And maybe God's been speaking to you today and up until this moment and days prior that, that you don't know Jesus. That if you died today without him, you know you'd go to hell. If you're here this morning and you want someone to come pray with you and walk you through what it means to accept Christ, would you just raise your hand? We, we're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to, but we're going to, someone will come pray with you and talk with you. If that's you, we just don't want to give an opportunity. If that's you.
even if you're watching online, if that's you, please reach out to someone. Email us, prayer at info.live. All I know is God is able. So let's join together. If you would, would you stand with me as we sing this last song? Let's praise the God who can deliver, the God who can deliver us from our Egypt, the God who has purpose in the wilderness. And let's praise him and let's thank him. us to be a faithful people as well. We praise your name today. I thank you, Lord, for the word that you brought through Aaron. I thank you, Lord, for each of those graduates and a chance to celebrate with them. But most of all, Lord, for a chance to meet with you as the body of Christ, to worship and to, and to adore you and to lift up your name. So thank you so much again, Lord, that you pour out your spirit here. In your mighty name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us online. And if you can come next week, we're going to add more tables. So let's come fill them up. Love you guys.